Greetings, JWC family. I'm coming to you for just a moment here today to express my deepest gratitude to each of you and your families for going through what you're going through. And I know that, you know, we've all had extreme life changes that have taken place, and it really has been a challenge during this COVID-19 virus outbreak. In addition to thanking each of you, I, I wanted to take a moment and just share with you at least uh, some of the updated things that are going on as we continue to uh, hear from uh, the leadership of our nation and our local government, as well as most of all, what the Lord is saying to us in the midst of this crisis. Uh, we've been told just uh, today, or even last night maybe, uh, that they're going to extend the stay-at-home order to the end of April, uh, at least to April 30th, 2020. So that means, you know, social distancing is going to keep on, keeping on. You're going to have to keep washing your hands, of course, which is something you ought to be doing anyways. And then there are other precautions that you're going to have to, to take uh, just to, to ensure that. I, we got a phone call from the mayor here in Holbert asking parents to please not allow their children to be outside in the parks without adult supervision because there's been big crowds of young people gathering together. And it's just not safe for them to do that at this time. So life as we know it, you know, this is the new normal. Uh, all these precautions, you're going to have to take them. It really is an unprecedented time in our, in our history, uh, unprecedented time. And since I've been around, probably many of you, uh, where the government has come in and just said, look, you know what, uh, we're going to have to do these things because of the continual growth of this virus and spread. And in fact, they're predicting that uh, the peak of deaths unfortunately, is going to rise over the next two weeks. Uh, they said that, uh, according to task force, that if we'll abide by the stay-at-home order, that the potential is that we could save up to a million lives. That's a million people that would die if we don't do the things that we need to do. And folks, that's a lot of people. And I know there's, you know, a lot going on with this. And, and you know, and I've asked our church staff and I've been putting, you know, a lot on folks to try to help me because uh, there's so much that needs to be done here, and they're doing the very best they can. And I appreciate Susan, and I appreciate Audrey, and Pastor James, and Pastor Hector, and the leadership team, and everyone that's involved with helping and assisting me uh, to uh, get us through this time. They're doing a great job, and uh, they're helping to stay in touch with people, and I really am thankful for how they're doing that. And I know that, uh, you know, uh, this creates just a whole, whole sense of things that, that we've never been able to do. And I, you know, I'm really thankful for, uh, you know, just the, the, the way people are checking on people in the congregation. And, and I love the creative ways that people are doing to, to, to keep connected. Uh, I think about Chris and Ed Safran, who, uh, have come up with some unique ways to do things, and others are doing the same thing. So whether it be uh, through a text message, through uh, FaceTime gatherings, uh, Zoom gatherings, uh, uh, emails, letters, cards, you know, and the regular telephone. Uh, you know, really, you know, you don't have to have a smartphone uh, to do to stay connected with people. And I know we forget about that sometimes, but you know, you're just a normal everyday house phone. Uh, is is enough to just pick it up, just call somebody, say, hey, I'm thinking about you, can I have a word of prayer with you over the phone, and encourage them. It could be a neighbor, a friend, people you haven't talked to in a while. Uh, I know there's Facebook and all the social media stuff, but the reality is, is that that personal touch always makes a big difference. <clears throat> you know, if you're having a conversation with somebody and during that conversation, uh, that person says that they're in need of something, would you let us know? Uh, would you just call the church 219-947-0301 and extension 100, 219-947-0301, extension 100. Call the church and pass that on to us because we can pass it on to those who are willing to help and, and to, to do things that are necessary to help people. Now, with all the things that are going on, I wanted to let you know uh, about some of the good things that are taking place as well. As you know, uh, the uh, government uh, just passed a stimulus package of $2 trillion. Uh, that's unprecedented for, to help in, in this crisis. Uh, I'm thankful 
for that uh, because that is going to be something that is going to be helpful to a lot of people, small businesses, uh, churches, uh, you know, and, and different ones that are out there that are just going through a real financial struggle right now because of loss of jobs, people are out of work, people got laid off, different things are happening. Uh, so this is, this is going to be huge to help. One of the other things that uh, this CARE Act also does, it's going to increase the limit on an individual taxpayer's deductions for contributions to public charities like Jubilee Worship Center. Now, in the past, uh, what they've done is they said that, you know, according to your adjusted gross income, you can only claim 60% of your charitable contributions. That's been changed. For 2020, if you itemize, you will be able to claim 100% of your charitable contribution. Now, that's huge, especially for those of you that have been contemplating giving uh, to, to the church or something like that, because now, if you're one of those fortunate ones uh, that uh, get to itemize, you'll be able to claim 100% of your charitable contributions. That, to me, is just phenomenal, because that's going to really encourage people to help to, to give, and that, that's the hope, is that people will be encouraged to give. Not only that, if you don't itemize if you just do your standard deductions and that's all you get because they did raise the standard deductions most people in fact i think something like 98 percent of the american population this year in 2019 uh, went to basically just a normal that they couldn't even reach the standard deduction because it went up to about twenty four thousand dollars but here's what they're doing the government's saying now that you're going to be able to deduct three hundred dollars of the cash contributions, regardless of whether or not you met the standard deduction or not. So that's huge. Uh, that means that $300 you're gonna get as a tax benefit because you're giving it to uh, a local charity like Jubilee Worship Center. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea here. I'm, I'm just sharing this with you because I know how much you love the church. And I know that uh, despite your current situation, you're doing everything you can to support the kingdom's work. And I want to thank you for that. And all of you that are, that are listening in right now, please understand something. God knows how to take care of us, but the interesting thing is how God does it, is he always works through people. I don't always understand how this happens, and I don't know why this particular situation is happening right now. Uh, when things were going so well, all of a sudden things turned around. But here's what I do know. Nothing like this took God by surprise. So if that be the case, then we have to realize that, you know what? God is able. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you from the from the depth of my heart, because you have been out there, uh, you're going online, you're giving online, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're texting in, you're, you're using the tithely, you're, uh, uh, some of you are stopping by the church and just dropping it off at the church, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate that, and I love, I love the fact that people now are going back to something we've always had around, and that is, again, snail mail. And I say snail mail only because of the fact it does move slower. But you know what? Who cares? That's a great way. You just can mail it to 415 North Hobart Road, Hobart, Indiana, 46342, Jubilee Worship Center. Uh, you know, and, and you can do it now. You know, uh, and, and I want to, again, just thank you. Thank you because you're so willing to give out of your necessity. And I'm reminded of, of the Apostle Paul in, in 1 Corinthians. We talked about how that churches in the early church, gave out of their, necess their, their necessity to the need that other people had. Now, I know, I know, I, I don't want to labor that. I just, I just want you to know how thankful I am. And, uh, and, I, and I really can't thank you enough. Now, another item I want to share with you real quickly here is that uh, we are working on Easter Sunday. Uh, because of the stay-at-home order, uh, we're looking for, you know, alternative ways, creative ways to be able to have Easter service. And uh, we're, we're thinking about doing a drive-in church service, uh, something along that line. I don't know exactly how we're going to do it. We're, we're still trying to work out the details, but that's coming. Uh, worst comes to worst. You know what? We'll put up power speakers on the outside. We'll, uh, we'll have speakers blasting the word, and uh, you can come in, just drive into the church, park in the church on Sunday morning. You can dress up if you want to. Uh, we'll, we're even going to try to get a little candy bags and stuff like that for the kids to have and, and things. The, the city is even doing a drive-by Easter egg hunt. So we're asking people in the city to, to decorate 
you know, all the, the houses. And I thought, you know what, what a great way. Maybe what we could do is connect to that and, and have people say, you know, for your kids, go around looking for it. And the one who can give us the most uh, pictures of Easter eggs, send that in and we'll give them a prize or something like that. We're, we'll work on something. I don't know what it'll be, but we'll come up with something. And, and I know it's going to be a, a great opportunity just to share the word of God. It's a good opportunity to be inviting people. We're going to put it up outside. We'll do something that's going to be there. We're going to have communion. We're, we're, we're going to figure it out church. Nothing's, nothing is uh, set in stone yet, but we're going to figure something out and we'll let you know just as soon as, as we can. But I will tell you this, this coming Sunday, which is Palm Sunday, I'm very excited because Pe Bishop James uh, Lewis is going to share the word of God with us. And his lovely wife, Shantae, she's going to be singing. Uh, man, I tell you what, I loved having uh, the Delbury's Sunday sing from their location from home. Uh, they just took us into the presence of the Lord, and they sang. What a great, great job they did. I, I'm so thankful for that. So uh, thank you, guys. Uh, when we're reaching out to you, asking you to help us, thank you to, for helping us do it. Now, um, so keep that in mind, uh, Palm Sunday, next Sunday. And then, of course, daily. I look forward to that daily uh, where we have our shelter daily in the Word from 11 to 1130 every Monday through Friday. I hope you're joining. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying doing it because it really has been, for me, it's really been a help. So thank you for that. Uh, Wednesday night, we'll have our prayer time again. We had a great prayer time last Sunday. People, we asked different ones, and we may be asking you. So we're asking different ones to join with us. It starts at 7 o'clock, and uh, we go through the list, and we just pray. And, we, you know, prayer is uh, uh, amazing because prayer really does change things, and I do believe in prayer. In fact, I was watching the news uh, today, and uh, I, the uh, – fellow that makes the my pillows his name is mike i don't know what his last name is but you probably seen the commercial my pillow uh he was on there because he his company is instead of making pillows they're making masks and uh, when he finished up he said i have something i just want to share and he began to share and i, and I love what he said because he said you know what we as a nation we need to pray we need to pray because god is the answer and i just so appreciate him standing there in front of those cameras all the world watching and he was saying to us, calling the nation to pray, turning to the president and saying, thank you for praying. Thank you to the staff. And I thought, God, this is such a great opportunity. Never before. So church, we got a great opportunity going. We don't need to lose it. We don't need to, we need to capitalize on this. So we're going to pray. And again, I know there's a lot going on. But I just want to remind you where we are. We're in this together. We're continuing to hold on. God's doing miracles. We're listening. We're hearing miraculous things happening. God's moving, so don't under, don't misunderstand or don't 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 underestimate the power of God in the time of crisis because this is the time God moves. We can hold to His unchanging hand. We can believe the Bible says He does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So, stay encouraged, stay focused, stay home, wash your hands, look up, get ready. God is always in charge, and I'll see you tomorrow for Shelter Daily in His Word. God bless you and have a great evening.